kids have been reunited. How's it going, guys? This is Andrew. I'm joined by Braxton and Mitchell today. We got a big trade to cover, so let's lay it down before we get before we get into this. The Brooklyn Nets have agreed to send Mikhail Bridges to the New York Knicks. The New York Knicks sent Boyan Bogdanovich four unprotected first round picks. So 2025, 2027, 2029, 2031. A protected first round pick from 2025 from Milwaukee, a 2028 unprotected pick swap, and a 2025 second round pick. And all for that, they got Mikel Bridges and one uh, 2026 second round pick. So looking at an absolute haul, four unprotected picks sent out for Mikel Bridges. So let's start uh, with I got two, I got both of the Angle Boys on with me today. Let's start with you, Brax. How do you feel about this trade? Yeah, I, I think uh, McHale, the dreams of Mikhail as a uh, number one option are all but dead with this move to the Knicks. Um, you know, he's he's pretty much, I mean, I have a hard time, you know, thinking he's going to produce more than OG, on the, especially if they bring back OG. Um, obviously, it's a pretty substantial haul, but I mean, this is definitely, definitely more of a of a real life move than a fantasy move. Cam Thomas, I mean, Cam Thomas, if you own Cam Thomas, you gotta be going crazy right now. This is this is what Shout you've been dreaming T-Choy. for. This, this is what you've been waiting for is, is, is I don't know, 35 points a game or something. This is gonna be ridiculous. <laughs> He's gonna have all the touches he wants. Um, Bojan uh, going back as well. I like that for the salary max. That's potentially somebody they can flip. I don't know if they're gonna pick up. Uh, only partially that that contract is guaranteed. Um, he's definitely can be useful on on the on a contender. Um, so potentially more assets headed towards the Nets for Bojan as well. But yeah, Cam Thomas, big winner. Uh, Mikhail, unfortunately, I think is a big loser here. Let's see. What do you? What? Uh, we're also joined by Mitchell today. Mitch, how's it going? What do you think about this move for both sides? Yeah, so obviously Brooklyn is turning into a rebuilding direction. I know they don't have their own first, but at the same time, you know, if there's an opportunity to sell Mikel Bridges for four future first round picks, you got to do it. It's all about asset accumulation uh, at this point and just kind of see where these picks land up. And hopefully they, they draft someone who is able to provide similar value um as Mikhail Bridges production wise I know Mikhail was seen as like a potentially 20 point per guy 25 point per game guy but now we kind of see how he kind of climaxed last season and then this season he dropped down to a little under 20 points per game with that being said um could we see Mikhail Bridges in a Suns version with the New York Knicks where his efficiency was one of his top selling points um maybe he is better in a reduced role I know it's going to be very crowded with Jalen Brunson, Julius Randle, OG Ananobi, Josh Hart. Wow, they're really deep. I'm just like listing names on names on names. But if Mikel can go to like a 15, 5, and 4 guy with shooting 50% from the field, 40% from three, and like he was that traditional 50, 40, 90 guy back in the Suns, if he can do that, that was still top 50, top 60 numbers. Um, So I think there is a little sliver of hope if he can regress back, or if not regress, but if he can turn back to the Suns version, but if he maintains the same bad habits and efficiency on the nets on lower output, then yeah, it's definitely not looking good uh, for Mikel Bridges in his dynasty outlook. Absolutely. So one thing I liked about this move for the net side, I've ne- like you, like Mitch mentioned, asset accumulation, that's good. Uh, this is big for the cams, Cam Thomas, especially as well as Cam Johnson. Um, but what I really like for the Nets receiving end is three picks in a much stronger draft class, which is next year in 2025. So they were getting two extra first round picks and another second round pick for next year's draft class too. So, you know, jump start, accelerate the rebuild, um, especially because I believe they still don't have any firsts in this draft right now too. So it looks like they're going to be setting their sights on next year. There are still some young players in Brooklyn, like we need to see more development from Derek Whitehead and Noah Clowney. 
both of which I think also benefit from this trade. Um, pretty much just across the board, all these young guys still at Brooklyn, the rebuild is on. So um, start accumulating these young Brooklyn assets while you can, um, especially if you're a competitive team, you want to see what somebody like a Clowney or a Whitehead can do for you. Uh, maybe even a Dayron Sharp if they let Nick Claxton walk too. Um, so the, the 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 move on both ends, it makes a ton of sense for the Knicks too. Obviously they're you know still gutted from that playoff loss. Um, adding another wing is, of course, not going to hurt you in that regard. I think one thing I'm most curious of, I'll ask both of your opinions on this, does this affect their ability to retain everybody? Like, are they going to still have OG Ananobi, Isaiah Harmstein, and Mitch Robinson on this roster next year in addition to Mikel, or is it just not possible? Let's start with you, Brex. Yeah, I think monetarily it's going to be difficult. Mikel is making, I think, uh, six or seven more million dollars than Bojan would have been, although it's unclear if they were going to guarantee that contract or not. Um, OG, I think, would be an insane pairing to um, have next to Mikel. If you could imagine both of them as defenders on the same team, that's ridiculous. Uh, if it were me, I like the idea of bringing back OG at whatever his price tag is, and then maybe letting Hardenstein walk, um, bring back uh, Precious Achua at uh, definitely a bigger dis a, a discount than what Hardenstein would command. There's talks of him getting uh, four years of $100 million. There's no way I think the Knicks can do that now at this point, um, or at least you know, both Hardenstein and OG, they are going to have to pick one. Um, and Achua definitely is going to command something like $10, $10 million. So I think uh, just like as a budget version of a backup pick, because I think they still want Mitchell Robinson to split minutes with whoever they, they uh, sign. Um, yeah, I, I think it's going to be tough for them to retain both. Hmm. Mitch, do you think that they have any chance of retaining OG? Does this also, does this move hurt any of the other Knicks wings? Like, for example, Josh Hart, Dante DiVincenzo, um, or is there going to be room for everybody here? Yeah, I, I do think that they can retain OG Ananobi. I know he declined his player option, but to Brax's point, I think Hartenstein will be the odd man out and probably leave the New York Knicks because I know they extended Josh Hart last season. So they're already in the books. I mean, they're really benefiting with Jalen Brunson's cost control contract where he's signing on annually for about like 28 mil a year for those four years he's there. Um, but with that being said, I, I really think Josh Hart is the one who does get the hit. Um, not this season, but last season, we kind of saw a pretty big decrease in production by Josh Hart, which was kind of like a, a little bit of a bad sign. And he really benefited when everyone was hurt um, at the end of this 2023-2024 season where he was playing 40 minutes. He was getting like 15 rebounds a game. And I just don't really see that happening, um, especially in the early parts of the year. We'll have to really kind of see how the season plays out with the Knicks. Um, you know, Tibbs will run down these players, especially the starters. So maybe Josh Hart kind of re reclaims his value that we saw. So one thing that didn't get mentioned here is Julius Randle. Um, I think it's a potential trade candidate now, uh, but we're going to see what the Knicks end up doing here. So there's a lot of a lot of bodies on the Knicks now, a lot of talent on the Knicks now with this acquisition of Mikhail Bridges, and we're going to see how that goes. And now uh, it's time for time for new things in Brooklyn. New players that are going to hit the reset button there. So thank you for tuning Andrew, in. I'd love to chime in real quick as we're logging off here. There's news breaking uh, as we're logging off. Yeah, this was not as big, but Brooklyn has traded back for their 26 first round pick. Um, they've sent some assets to Houston. So uh, just as we're signing off, if, if, it, if it's not clear that Brooklyn is heading into tank mode, I think that's going to uh, really drive that point home there. All right. Hey, well, that, I'm glad we caught that. We were just on another video where we missed the first watch bomb by 30 seconds. So we, we, we at least <laughs> caught the caught the third one while we're while we're recording this one. So thank you again for watching. Uh, like this video, subscribe if you're new. Comment down below. What do you think about this deal? Who won? Uh, what do you think about the Knicks sending uh, five first round picks and a pick swap in order to get Mikhail Bridges? Thank you again for watching, everybody. We'll catch you next time.